Guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is going to be the fourth match from NA Team Battles. Second set played on August 21st. Upper right in corner, we have Striker starting as the Orange Zerg. Bottom left in corner, we have Just starting as the Yellow Protoss. This is going to be on Eclipse. And honestly, I'm going to say I haven't seen a lot of play from Just. In the last match I saw in Just, which was also a PVZ, it did not... I think it was against Crossy. And you just ended up getting out maneuvered a bit but I, I would argue and so we'll see how we can do against striker here in this match this is eclipse it is a two-player map which opens up a lot of possibilities i think both directions this is i feel like eclipse is that i'm not sure i feel like eclipse and polypoid are the two maps they're just a lot of good maps now actually i think previously there were maps out there where it was like you had your python or you had your fighting spirit or you had your, there are certain maps that are like, this is the map we like playing on, this is the map we like practicing on, this is the map we feel that's balanced, but it feels like there's so many maps these days that have kind of an interesting balance that have a little bit of variety, but Eclipse is one of those, match, uh, one of those maps where it's just, uh, it's been played a lot, and it, it feels like it's one of those ones that's going to be around for a long time. Anyway, spawning pool, upper right hand corner, looks like we have an overpool build from Striker to start. Just going ahead. Let's see if he opts for Forge first. I think he's going to go Forge first just because the otherwise, usually if you're going Gateway first, you're a little bit more on top of it, making sure that Gateway is right on the front. So Forge being built, Probe moving up to go ahead and do some of that scouting information. Should be able to get into the, up into that base, no problem. So this usually this precipitates two cannons on the front. Overlord going ahead and seeing that Zergling making its way across. The one thing Just might be able to do, it looks like he's a little bit late, might be able to move this probe up to go ahead and disturb this hatchery. But yeah, it was just a, a sliver late for the timing to do so. But knows that hatchery is coming down a little bit later because you, it is, that's one nice thing about the animation right there is when you see the animation like this, you kind of know the timing of it. Going ahead and sneaking up. Only two Zerglings being produced. Now here's the thing. Just might be able to sneak away with just one cannon. He actually went Nexus first. Oh, so he's going cannon right there. Oof. Actually, I feel like if Striker had gone... Yeah, that was that was brave, I gotta say. So he went Nexus first. Does have the cannon to follow. Just a handful of Zerglings being produced. The Zerglings making their way across. So he does manage to walk up and see that he doesn't need additional cannons because that was he kept that probe scout alive and noticed that there were drones being produced rather than Zerglings. But that was really brave play. Because oftentimes if it was just straight Zerglings, they could have gotten on top of this cannon or even run by it. Uh, done some additional damage. Third hatchery going up here for strike at the 12 o'clock location. But anyway, just able to cut a little bit of a corner, get that nexus up. Gateway also being built on that front door. And the Zerglings trying to hunt down this probe scout. But the probe scout able to stay alive, see that extractor up. Natural expansion coming online. Assimilator warping in in this back corner. So now, so just able to cut that corner. Able to get that nexus up a little bit earlier than later. push the economy from that way. I'm kind of what I'm curious what Striker's going to do following this match because honestly it feels like he just turned into this uh, ZVP specialist and has experimented with a lot of things. It looks like this time it is going to be three hatch Muta potentially. So morphing layer, no hydralis den at any location just yet. And he's doing that right inside this probe's face. I I'm almost wondering if he's going to opt to go for that four hatch uh, pullback play where you kind of drop that fourth hatch tree, grab the hydralis den a little bit later. And then more, and then basically play it where you can kind of respond to what your opponent's doing or kind of put pressure on them. And really what that ends up turning into is, is because you have a lot of options, it makes it where your Protoss opponent really, especially these days as far as the meta, they have to protect those High Templar and get really good storms to make up for it. Looks like this probe upon seeing that third hatchery is going to go ahead and come back to home base. We do see a Cybernetics Core up, a Stargate being morphed in. Layer just about finishing. We should see a Spire momentarily. No second gas uh, yet at the natural expansion. Zergling blood on the ground near that natural. Forge being morphed in. So what Just is going to need to do, it, once he has this Corsair scout, he's going to want to plop some cannons at his main and his natural expansion just to kind of spot things out. I do want to see if Striker is going to do the full dedication. He's also getting level 1 weapons. Uh, for air attack, so it looks like he is going to do some dedication there. And 
kind of this is the portion of the map or portion of the match where I really want to see I have yet to see actually striker or really any of these guys go for kind of that old school just straight up three hatch muta play and again because he's not grabbing the second gas I believe he is going to fold back into kind of four hatchery uh, style and I'm just kind of waiting for that to get plopped down there it is uh, so essentially what he's going to do is he's going to try to plop down get some scourge Try to knock out that first Corsair and play the match from there. Citadel of Adun going down. Just actually sticking just to a single gateway. He's been building Zealots non-stop out of this. As far as a follow-up. But the Corsair making its way across it. He's going to be able to see uh, the Spire being built. I don't think it's going to have time to kill an Overlord before the initial Scourge are being produced. But it's going to see that fourth hatchery, the Evolution Chamber. And yeah, this is kind of the more macro style. It looks actually a fifth hatchery being grabbed as well. To the north. I've seen variations on this where it's like four hatch. This is five hatch. Uh, five mules being produced. Evolution chamber. Going to be part of that Sim City on the front. So now just going to have to shell up for a little bit. And kind of the pressure play here is, is yeah, okay, you can run zealots out, but they're going to run into mulesks. Um, but the thing for justice is he does have more corsairs being built. He does have level one weapons being coming online. So he might be able to, in combination with zealot leg speed and level one weapons there. Be able to sneak up, get a good timing attack. I think it's usually around like the 7.30 mark is where they typically want to hit this. Somewhere around 7 minutes. And kind of press forward either the 12 o'clock location or the natural expansion. Maybe kill some overlords. Maybe get some drones and play from there. The Mutalisks. Let's see if they... There's no cannon here at the natural expansion. There are... The Corsairs are here. Level 1 weapons is going to be is a little bit off. I think these four Corsairs should be able to engage but might end up losing a handful of probes. Yeah, now pushing up. It's going to force them back. But just losing... Looks like a handful of probes. As far as that follow-up attack. But now just... So he's got two gateways. Leg speed finishing. I'm looking for him to go ahead and do that move out. There's level and weapons finishing. Being very, very patient with this. And Striker just setting up to go ahead and absorb this. A six hatchery at the 12 o'clock location. And a Hydalus den. A couple Scourge grouping up with this as well. So the Scourge want to take down those Corsair. So if Just can micro his Corsair just perfectly, he can actually take out this wave of Scourge without really suffering any consequences. Five Corsair in the air with level one weapons. But he's got to micro it really, really precisely. The Zealots seeing those Scourge is really going to make that easier to deal with. So see how many of those land. Several of them land, unfortunately, leaving just two Corsair otherwise. The Zealots rushing up to that 12 o'clock location it looks like they are able to sneak through that sim city going to be able to be to get that sunken colony down the corsair trying to engage those mules but five mules with level one weapons versus this corsair aren't going to get a lot accomplished the zealots able to kill a lot of probes though or sorry a lot of drones at that 12 o'clock base so just with this attack able to get a decent i think more accomplished than i was expecting but definitely getting a lot accomplished here more Scourge being produced to try to deal with this Corsair. The Corsair is going to back off now that those uh, Scourge are overhead. But the Zealots continuing to wreak havoc. And slowing Striker's economy down dramatically. Finally, the Mutalisks able to wipe out the remaining Zealots. That's one thing with Mutalisks on Zealots. is Zealots are so beefy that it takes them a long time. But that was the entirety of just Attack Force. And it doesn't look like he went ahead. And he does have High Templar out now. He does have Psy Storm grabbing some additional gateways and was able to slow some of that economy down thanks for the raid by the way dead infested hi dead infested will usually i do not give shout outs but i gotta give a shout out to dead infested because you gotta you just gotta right so hi to dead infested uh but the thing is is even though striker's economy was a little bit disrupted right there i don't know that just turned around with anything where he can kind of capitalize on it. Striker just re-droning effectively and just resealing up some of these locations. Just plopping down a lot of gateways. Has a lot more zealots. Has some high Templar in a defensive position. Essentially he didn't secure a third. Uh, getting his robotic facility he does have a second forge up as well to go ahead and continue with that upgrade advantage. And that's one thing, this Evolution Chamber just now starting level 2 weapons. So you might be able to, off that double forge, keep in mind only one Evolution Chamber versus uh, two forges. 
Should be able to get an upgrade advantage overall, but uh, Hydralis Den finishing Lurker Tech and Striker. If he can just morph some Lurkers on the high ground, that's definitely going to seal that 12 o'clock. The Zealots now moving up with those Corsair. The Mutalisks sneaking up. Let's go ahead and see. I'm trying to remember if it's to you. Shoot. Ah, no, not speed up. Slow back down. Sorry, everybody. I'm going to redo this one, actually. Sorry. Damn it! I'm still going to give Dead Infested a high, though. I know, ruined. I need to learn my Observer hotkeys better. Okay, before we start... <laughs> Thanks for the bits. Uh, yeah, I'm a perfectionist. Mostly, I... yeah. I'm not a perfectionist, actually. It's just sometimes if I don't feel it, if I'm not happy with it... Yeah, I know. Perfect is the enemy of good. A dead infested. I'm still going to give you the high. He also said Vulture's OP. Alright. One more time. Sorry, everybody. Mostly... There it is. What did I hit instead? Okay, U apparently increases the speed. What declines the speed? Is it D? Yeah, D. Okay. Now I know. Now I know. Learned something. So it was a mistake, but learned something. Alright, sorry everyone. Replay is... Aside from me screwing up right there and reciting to do it, it's... Turning in an okay match. Mostly I feel like Strikers... Well, I'll talk about it here in game. Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is going to be game four. Actually, my second time through it. I had to stop in the middle because I misclicked something. Apologies to Twitch stream. Up right in corner, we have Striker starting as the orange Zerg. He has defeated several guys and sitting, uh, continuing to sit in these matches as King of the Hill. Bottom left in corner, we have Just starting as the yellow Protoss. I had a viewer in chat. I believe it was Tesuo. By the way, Akira is an amazing movie. Everyone should go watch it immediately if you haven't. But Just is a guy I haven't seen a ton of uh, either, but I have seen him. I, I, he's an up-and-coming Protoss player for sure if he's hanging out with the, these NA team battles. I haven't. I don't have his stream information, so if people know if he's streaming or not, go ahead and let me know what his stream information is. Um, also, high Dead Infested, because that's got a... He gave me a raid in the midst of this, and that's just something that... It doesn't matter, like, the fact that it... Other people will raid me, and I will try to, like, I'll, I'll say hi after the match. But if Dead Infest is raiding me, I gotta say hi during, right? That's just, it's gotta happen. And people who know, they know. Uh, anyway, just last time I saw him play, he was playing against Crossy. He struggled a bit in that matchup. And so I'm wondering how he's gonna do against Striker in particular, because Striker just seems to have figured out his EVP, it almost figures like. At least his EVP has been very, very strong. Looks like he's going for an overpool, kind of playing that safe middle of the road build. Uh, thus far. Uh, and spawning pool morphing in just... Usually, uh, I said this in the... I'm going to try to repeat many of the things I said in the first commentary for people on Switch. Looks like he's going to go for that forge opening. Oftentimes, if they're going for gateway opening, they want it right there. If... Uh, mostly because you want to get those zealots out as quickly as possible. Spawning pool morphing in. It looks like that probe scout going to move out. Um, I think also having that probe scout on delay, oftentimes... With these pool openers, with any opener really, sometimes you can get towards that natural expansion to deny uh, that second expansion from going up with that probe scout. However, in this instance, it's going to be too late. Striker going to grab that second hatchery without too much trouble. That probe is going to go ahead and see the hatchery uh, timing, mostly because it's kind of morphing in. So he knows he's up against um, some sort of pool before hatchery opening. Seeing only the two eggs being produced though, Striker kind of Trying to pull a wily one. He's throwing two more eggs up. I don't think Just is going to fall for it, though. He actually went Nexus first, followed by a cannon, which is a little bit risky, to be honest. Two Zerglings popping. And now the Zerglings trying to chase down. Actually, I think sometimes... Don't quote me on this, but I believe sometimes if you hug a probe in a certain position or along the extractor, sometimes you can do some annoying things there. But anyway, probe scout going to stay alive. Looks like a 12th hatch being grabbed from Striker. Now, the thing from Striker is it's just been really entertaining watch his, watching his matches, in particular against his Zerg opponents, because he's had, first of all, a lot of different openers, but also I've enjoyed his kind of passive precision play, which reminds me, 
very much of kind of Jaehyun style of play. Gateway up on the front door for him. Nexus is going to be warping in momentarily. A um, little bit of a edge there where he was able to get that Nexus sooner rather than later instead of that second cannon. Um, but doing a good job keeping this probe scout alive. But Striker, yeah, he's been going for a lot of these builds where um, more or less he's kind of mirroring his Protoss opponent and keeping them off guard. It's like, okay, you're going a lot of Zealots. Well, I'll build a lot of Lurkers and have them on your front door. Okay, you're not... You don't have enough anti-air. I'm going to switch to Mulisks very fast and punish you for it. He's done a lot of that action, which has been very enjoyable to see. He's really capitalizing on what I consider the the strongest piece of the Zerg army, which is its flexibility, its ability to do a lot of, of those tech switches. Total Clock base will be online in not too long. It looks like that Probe Scout is going to be able to wander up and see it. I think upon seeing a lack of Hydlos Den, and I think it actually even saw that layer morphing in, he knows he's going against some sort of three hatch opener. So kind of threatening three hatch Muta. We do have Cybernetics Core uh, online. Should see a Stargate. Let's see if I want to make sure I can remove that. Yes. Getting better at removing these kind of panels. This is the thing that screwed me up. I wanted to remove a panel mid-game. I accidentally sped it up and didn't know what the hotkey was to slow the replay down. Now I know all of those things. Um... Now I know all of those things. Upper right hand corner. Striker going to go ahead and drop that spire. I think there was a doorbell ring in the background, but I'm going to ignore it because I'm not expecting anyone. Uh, natural expansion assimilator warping in. So it looks like this is going to be pushed towards potentially more Dark Templar tech. Something along those lines. Uh, potentially. Potentially actually grabbing weapons one. Potentially Dark Templar. Usually when you're grabbing double gas, you're thinking about more of the, you know, High Templar openers. Things along those lines. But Spire new, morphing in. The one thing from Striker is, is when he's going for these Spire openings, what has been popular is, is to actually go for that third hatchery, or sorry, that fourth hatchery, and just get a couple Scourge and play kind of a stronger macro game to follow, rather than going for just kind of the, the large grouping of Mulus. I think that is what we're going to see because we do not see a second gas, and now we actually see that second hatchery plopping down. And essentially with this play, uh, what you're doing is you're getting a handful of Mutalisks and kind of threatening the natural expansion. It looks like we do see that Citadel of Dune and Initial Corsair being built. We are getting level 1 weapons, which and I like the level 1 weapons and Corsair, uh, and Corsair, Corsairs in large numbers to go ahead and deal with this sort of thing on the front. Mostly because, again, where Striker likes playing that flexibility, those Corsairs being able to swat down the Mutalisks up in the air and also threaten Overlords. I mean, it's something you need in kind of this variation of play where you want to take care of those overlords so the, high, so the Dark Templar can be a bit more effective. But I think even if you're going standard play and going more towards High Templar tech, you need to protect those High Templar, and Corsair can help you with that effort. Upon seeing this, actually no cannon being plopped down into the natural expansion. We do see five Mutalisks. Might be enough Corsair to go ahead and push this back. This is going to be three Corsair and level one weapons not too far behind. Once these Mutalisks are moving field, looks like SimCity already being dropped down for Striker. He's got that Creep Colony up, he's got that Hatchery going for... Looks like he is going to fold back. I don't see a Hydalus Den just yet, but it looks like he is going to fold back toward Lurker Hydalus, but because he is getting that Spines upgrade. So three, probably a fourth Corsair by the time these Mutalisks make their way down here, but the no cannon yet, so there should be a handful of kills that Striker shall be able to glean at this natural expansion. Because five Mulisks can, especially well micro can do a significant amount of damage. So there's one down, two down, three getting taken out before they're going to back off from these Corsair. And now, actually, Striker's response as well. He's actually producing a large amount of Scourge to go ahead and try to take these Corsair out. It's going to come down to some micromanagement from Just. He is going to have level one weapons. And level one weapons with significant amounts of Corsairs if you micro them really, really well, you can end up taking down those Scourge before they're able to land. Level 1 weapons coming on lines out leg speed as well. So he's hitting that 7 minute 30 timing attack. Which is very popular amongst Protoss players. Marching towards that 12 o'clock location, there's additional hatcheries. So that's 6 hatcheries overall, I believe. Actually, is that 7? So 3, 4, 5, no, 6, 6 hatcheries overall. Hydrosten blockading the way and 2 creep colonies. I don't think that second creep colony is going to be in time. Mutalisks there to absorb. The Corsairs engaging the Scourge. Unfortunately, not microed very well, so all but two die. But the Zealots marching straight into this 12 o'clock location. 
straight past that SimCity, and there's just a skeleton crew to deal with this from Striker. So the drones pulling off the line, trying to defend, they're going to get wiped out. This is going to be that Sun Colony actually getting wiped out very, very rapidly. Second Sun Colony up, but Striker can't rely on that for very long because the Zealots right on top of it, wiping it out very, very rapidly. So a bit of an economic harassment. Striker down to 27 drones. And I'm wondering if Just is actually going to be able to get bonus on top of this. He's continuing to engage with these Corsair to try to push these Mutalists back, but the Scourge going ahead and wavering, kind of waving the rest of this off. And it looks like the Mutalists are going to be able to take out the remaining Zealots. So Striker having a bit of a battered economy at the 12 o'clock location, but... And just following this up with plopping down a lot of gateways. So able to do a lot of economic damage to the 12 o'clock location. But Striker going to go ahead and just redrone. Get Lurker Tech. If he can get Lurkers here at the 12 o'clock location, it's going to be very difficult with anything to kind of push in and re-evict that. Also getting uh, level 1 armor. As far as a follow-up, it looks like he does have double forge versus just the uh, single evolution chamber. Level 1 spines. So missile attack finishing uh, for Striker. But... The thing is, is okay, yeah, and this is kind of the question mark I have for a lot of Protoss players these days. So yeah, you were able to do a lot of economic damage to the 12 o'clock location, but you still have yet to secure a third base. Um, looks like there is going to potentially be a follow-up attack with a lot of these gateway units, but Striker again, it seems like he's just well shelled up. If he can just get lurkers here, uh, get some lurkers behind this SimCity, it's going to be very, very difficult to punch through that. And there's also these Mulists that still are still in the air, where Striker can continue to produce these Mulists, and if you can keep that Corsair count low, he can threaten kind of that backstab. And there's still only a single cannon, it looks like, to the north, where I believe these Mulists can kind of sneak in along that uh, lower corner and do some damage there. I'm just about caught up to where <laughs> we're at the interruption of the replay again. Sorry for that. Looks like we have seven gateways. Technically eight gateways with that gateway in the front. More Corsairs have been produced, so that's going to be a full six gateway count and just moving out once again. But as he's moving out, those Mulists and Scourge moving out to that natural expansion. And trying to go in. Looks like they might be able to get a handful. That's going to push these Corsair back. The Corsair should be able to... Actually, catching the Scourge this time. The Mules do not want to engage heads up. The Zealots marching to that natural expansion. Some Lurkers being morphed. It looks like the Lurker is going to once again try to create a blockade here. Is this going to be enough? Just actually pushing into that natural expansion. Having some trouble getting his Zealots to micro through. The Zealots actually dying along the way. Striker now pulling the drones off. And the Lurkers dropping. It looks like the Mutalists are going to be wiped out overhead. And now kind of the secondary problem is, is Just is going to be able to feast on these Overlords, as a lot of those Hydralisks that were here to defend this Overlord grouping were in fact morphed into Lurkers, and this is all wow. Huge amounts of economic damage. Now the Hydralisks finally pressing up. The Zealots actually were able to make it in the main and do some additional attack right there, so Just able to not... I, I missed that these Zealots made it into the main, but Just able to get all sorts of damage done here. Scattering Striker, he's pulling way ahead in supply, and if he just continues to press this, actually might even be able to get the Spawning Pool. The Zealots, not quite able to get that Spawning Pool kill. It's down to 68 health, comparatively, and the Corsairs trying to flood around and continue to put Striker in the red. So Striker having to defend with just a handful, looks like still for Corsair standing. Single Zergling being missed by that attack force from Jusk. He's just now taking that third. Strike is going to need to lick his wounds. So just actually not in a terrible position now. His main is uh, a little bit thin, but he's going to go ahead and grab that third base. He's got... He was able to just do all sorts of damage right there. Level 1 weapons, level 1 armor. He's going to continue to try to play that upgrade advantage. Needs to be careful. Still babysitting this Corsair. Great side storm over those Hydralisks. And I like that just... So he, yeah, he, oof. Miss my queen losing a handful of these Corsair, but I do like that he's staying in Striker's face in the midst of this. Let's see if that's Zergling. Come on, Zergling, wake up. There's work to be done. I do like that he's staying at least in Striker's face and not letting Striker kind of getting some breathing room to go ahead and rebuild those drones and just sit back and get that huge macro advantage once again. Striker going ahead and grabbing that one o'clock base and kind of playing more defensively from there. Just does have that third established now and this cannon momentarily should be able to disrupt that Zergling. What a lazy Zergling. Looks like something... Uh, microed into this natural expansion to get a look and immediately popped. But Striker, if he just sits back, continues to drone up, if Just doesn't press in and go ahead and take out that 12 o'clock base or do any sort of harassment there, I'd and again, yeah, just playing some nice defensive uh, situation from here. Basically, Striker's going to be able to stay ahead in the overall macro game. And with Just 
once this mines out, essentially Striker will still be mining off four bases and just will be sitting back at two. But this is a big attack force. The weapons upgrades are there. He's got a big supply lead. And if he can Psy Storm, just get some really good Psy Storms, he might be able to just, yeah, press the match from there. So just showing some nice ZVP. It looks like that Zergling. I'm wondering which cannon got it. I wish he could see kill counts on the cannons. Big Dragoon Force filtering in to go ahead and deal with potential uh, lurkers in the mid-game. The Corsair going to go ahead and peek in and look at the saturation, see what it can see. Second Evolution Chamber being added there by Striker. A handful of Mutalisks being produced. Queen's Nest as well, as far as a follow-up. So basically, at this stage, Striker is hoping to get some Mutalisks out to be able to pick off High Templar as part of this ball. Um, the Corsair count is a little bit lower, so it's going to be a little bit more difficult to defend. Dragoons do a lot of damage to Mulus, but it takes them a long time to kill them, so oftentimes they can just dive in and pick the units off. You can see Striker just trying to bait the Psy Storm out and force some basically bad Psy Storm engagements, because Psy Storm really is that critical piece that can equalize things. Just happy to go ahead and establish his third, get those cannons up rather than forcing any sort of attack as far as a follow up. Does still have those 8 gateways, actually adding some Dark Templar as well. But while this is happening, Striker is going to go ahead and match his supply and start pulling ahead in tech. I'm waiting for that Hive tech to start dropping. Has level 2 uh, missile attack. The Mutalisks, 8 Mutalisks, diving into this 9 o'clock base. Again, finding the hole in here. And with the Corsairs being out of the fight, not able to run in, provide some support, so completely emptying the probes there. And actually going to march right into the main. The mobility of the... And I love that Striker does this. He's like, okay... Now that your Corsair count's low, I'm just going to go and dive in and wipe out your economy because you're not playing honest. You can see all of these units trying to filter back. Huge swing of momentum now, just down to 37 probes. And essentially it... An Overlord getting a, a little bit misrallied there. I'm wondering if that was the Overlord with speed. Though. And going ahead and also, now that he's done damage, going to go ahead and back out. So does the damage, backs out, continues to macro up. Additional hatcheries being plopped down. Striker just... I love his play. I just love it. I love seeing it. So now Just is kind of in an all-in situation where I honestly should just group up, get a lot of his army built, and see what he can do before a striker just has an overwhelming army to repel anything he can throw at him. And I think this is kind of the window he might want it. You do have some lurkers right there to kind of burrow across. Just look at this. Like, even look at this. Uh, so you got the lurkers down here to go ahead and engage. The mule's trying to dive in. It looks like, I think I might have missed an a High Templar getting picked off there, but he's also got this batching of Lurkers across this lane. Um, the rest of his army kind of staging out to the front here. I just like, it almost looks like a Terran line, but with Lurkers. I like Striker's map control and also a lot of map positioning. Again, trying to find a High Templar to pick off. Maelstrom now being upgraded. Potential Dark Templar, which would, or Dark Archons, to go ahead and pin down this Bioforce. Actually like that play. Especially against Mutalisks, when you don't have a lot of High Templar, it allows you, or a lot of uh, Corsair, everything else, it lets those Psy Storms be even more effective. Just now moving forward, Observer is getting picked off right on the front. They're going to go ahead and back off. And the Observer is not in position to provide the de detection that's needed for those Lurkers to the north. Now starting to scoot in. Some Psy Storm, some Zerglings flooding in from the right. Not able to pick off a High Templar or really get a lot accomplished there, though. And the Mulas trying to engage from that rear. It looks like they are engaging Dragoons right there. But Striker now has three locations that he can kind of engage from. Great Psy Storms from the right from Justin. Fortunately, Psy Storming some of his own units. It looks like I think that was a misclick. So it's just Dragoons to follow this up. An Adrenal Upgrade is going to be here momentarily as well as a Defiler Mound. So the window for Just to get something accomplished here is closing. And honestly, it was kind of a thin window to begin with. He does have a 20 Supply lead. But the Zerglings with the Adrenal Upgrade and... Actually, Burrow being researched? I think that was a cancellation right there. Yeah, but as soon as the Defilers are able to drop the Dark Swarm, this very Dragoon-heavy army is just going to melt to the Zergling attack force. So just... And he needs to press forward and do it. It looks like Striker grabbing a base in the bottom right and going just to be sure. He's already well ahead economically as far as just what he has, what he's acquisitioned is in his control. Since Psy Storms in the North catching the... Dark Archon, we do have a little bit of a Maelstrom to the north. Zerglings engaging from the right. Some good side storms right there as well. Overlords actually pushing in in the midst of this. I'm not sure. I think this is a misrally of Overlords. But you can see the Zerglings starting to flood in. This is just going to get worse as the Defilers also join this attack grouping. 
because this is a lot of Dragoons, not a lot of Zealots, and only a single Archon to try to defend. And even, you can see, even without the Dark Swarm, these Zerglings are just chewing through these Dragoons very, very rapidly, just reinforcing with more Dragoons and more Zealots. But more reinforcements from Striker are pouring out as well, and I feel like Striker can kind of take his time with this. He just pick away, he knows that Just is kind of an all-in, he needs to breach something, he needs to do a lot of damage. So as long as he kind of slow plays this, and continues to wipe these units out uh, piecemeal at a time, he will end up with an overall advantage. More Zerglings flooding in. Looks like that Archon finally going to get taken out. So, well, maybe not. Still going to stand in the north. Some additional size storms being dropped, not catching, just catching a handful of Zerglings. And just now wanting to dive in, but he's cleared out a lot of those units. Now going to dive into the upper left, and actually he might have, as I was saying, Striker can play this patiently. He's got a huge Dragoon Force that's actually pushing in the upper left. I thought there would be... No, and Striker GGing. I misread that entirely. Striker not having enough to push... Oof, never mind. I thought Striker was going to have enough to to push that back, but did not have enough. Let's go back and look at the critical moment. I'm going to have to... Yeah, this one, this one's a bit baffling, I'm going to admit. Highly upgrade, like, just a massive upgrades here is, like, one critical thing. But Striker, this is the critical piece here. I feel like the Filer Mound, Dark Swarm, and this pretty much gets wiped out. Natural Expansion, so the main is mined out. Natural Expansion is thin, so it's basically two base otherwise. So it's two base versus effectively, like, technically soon to be five base, right? This is very Dragoon heavy. The Zerglings are not really... They, they got the Adrenal upgrade, but not a lot else. So yeah, I'm wondering if this is just like a bit of a macro fail. Some good size storm right there. But the thing is, is it looks like, yeah, they were able to get in here and they were going to be able to take out that 12 o'clock base. Maybe it's just the feeling... This is the critical piece here, is, is just the missing Defiler. Yeah, he definitely had the bank. I'm not sure he realized how uh, behind Just was economically, where he's just basically mining at the 9 o'clock. But Just going to go ahead and, yeah, take that game. Honestly, that one surprises me a little bit. And also maybe just throwing too many attack forces with this rally and not being patient waiting for the Defiler. So here's the Defiler being built. This is the piece I was... <clears throat> expecting. Because even here, okay, so... Where's the Defiler? This pops through. There are Zealots re... Now, these Zealots can do a lot of damage here. But Striker still has a bank to work with. So, bottom right-hand base is up and running. Where's the Defiler is the trick? I mean, here's the thing. Even if he loses all this, he's still got... Basically, four bases to two. I'm not sure he realizes that, though. And if he can just kind of, like, walk behind this. But, yeah, I got to call, well, right, call him GG there. Yeah, just has no bank. Striker has a decent bank. Not sure where the Defiler was. Oh, well. Thing is, is we have full vision. Striker doesn't. Striker might have thought that... Uh,